Probably need the microphone. Let me see if the mic is on. That's going to be a problem. Let me see. Testing. Okay, mic's on. All right. Three, two, one. Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Sun Belt, your team every day. Honored to have the head coach of the Sun Belt Tournament champion, Scott Barry. Southern Miss uh, Golden Eagles prevail 6 to 2 over the Raging Cajuns on Saturday. Uh, your thoughts of the tournament win, coach, because it, it was a heck of a tournament. Yeah, it really was, David. Uh, real proud of our guys and how they were able to navigate through there. Of course, obviously, we lost to App State in the in the uh, first game on Saturday and had to come back and beat them in a do-or-die situation to get to championship Sunday. Same thing that Lafayette had to do against Coastal. Uh, both both teams had a long day on Saturday and uh, – you know, had to wake up, get ready to compete on, on Sunday, and just thankful that our guys were able to, to come out on top against a really good Lafayette team. So, yeah, so most of the tournament, like I think the first couple of days, there were no upsets. There was not an upset in the tournament until App State beat Troy. And then, I mean, you guys had to play again. That for What's it like playing a baseball game early in the morning? Because these guys are not generally used to that, and that's what happened to you guys on Saturday. Well, I'll tell you what, if you can win that 9 o'clock game, it's the greatest game of them all because you have That's the right. rest of the day off. That's and right. through my years, we've we've had to play that 9 o'clock game and, and and have won it. And it's a it's a great feeling to know that you have a, a, a win under your belt early in the day and enjoy the rest of it. But App State had a different had a different uh, objective that day than than we did. They came out on fire after beating Troy the, the night before, uh, you know, in a really, really uh, – Different kind of contest. They scored 10 runs with two outs there after being down seven to three. Right. They're actually down seven to nothing at one point, cut it to seven to three. And then the next inning, they hit them for 10 and ended up winning 13 to, to eight, I think it was. But, you know, they were on fire. They came out. They had that sense of urgency where they knew if they, uh, if they didn't win the conference tournament, their season would be over. So they had something to say about that on that Saturday morning. And uh, and certainly deserved to win the game. We uh, we didn't play well enough to beat beat them. Lost four to two, but then we're able to rebound and come back and beat them that uh, that evening. And 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 in a run rule, which really saved a, a lot of our pitching and we and we lined us up pretty good with uh, Lafayette the next day. Yeah, I, I give you I give Southern Miss and App State a lot of credit. You know, App State could have gone down quietly. They had a big win over Troy. They're playing the number one seed in in the tournament and or they're playing the Southern Miss and you know, they, they, they come out and they beat what is a really good Southern Miss team. I think one of the advantages that you, and then Southern Miss, I mean, I guess I'm a hashtag always a bright side kind of guy. You get to see what it's like when you guys are pushed to the brink, right? That was the first time you were pushed and you get to see how you guys react because you know, the Cajuns needed to play well to get into the tournament you guys were just looking to get a seeding and, and potential host. So it's a little bit different of a reaction the way you guys respond than maybe what somebody else had to. Well, and you're right. You know, I'll tell you, go, going back to the regular season, we were disappointed and uh, and just missing uh, being able to to be conference regular season champs and co-champs with Coastal Carolina. We, they finished one game ahead of us. They won the series earlier in the year, two out of three from us. So, uh, you know, we were disappointed not to win a regular season. That's kind of what we uh, – that's what we're about uh, here and have been of, of late in trying to win those conference titles, both uh, on regular season and, and tournament. But, you know, when we got in the tournament, certainly our goal was to to win a conference tournament championship and, and attain that automatic bid. You know, I never feel really good about it on, on a uh, at-large bid. I know there's just so many things that happen through the course – of these conference tournaments, a lot of upsets, a lot of bubble busters that that happen. And unless you're just uh, one of those, you know, top in the RPI, top 20 right. teams, you just I don't think you ever feel comfortable about it. And you go into conference play and you lose a couple of games, then look out. You're no longer in consideration. Other people have passed you by. So, you know, it was good to get those first two under our belt. Obviously, the App State loss kind of refocused what we had to do. Uh, you know, we we faced a situation where probably we would have continued to play on, but there was no guarantee, and that was the message to our guys. And to assure that we we did have a place, then we needed to win that second game on Saturday against App State and get in that championship game. And if we wanted to lock it down, obviously we'd have to win that championship day, and that's just what we did. 
All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stay with the tournament for now, and then we'll get back to the regular season and how all this is manifested. We're talking to Scott Barry, Southern Miss head baseball coach. Uh, I mean, talk about some of these pitching performances, right? The Raging Cajuns get him from Blake Marshall, which nobody saw coming. Uh, you know, throws like a hundred pitches in two different ga- you know two different games in one day, and then. You know, when you guys needed it on Saturday with maybe the game in the balance, you know, I have no idea what happens. But, you know, Justin Storm comes in, uh, gets a big play at the plate, a great throw by your left fielder. And from there, you guys took it on. Talk about, you know, Justin Storm and, and his season and the, and the job he did on Saturday to really secure, you know, the Sunbelt Championship for Southern Miss. Well, I think if you look at Justin Storm, his, his coming out party – was last year in the regional on that second game on Sunday against LSU uh, where we had to win or, or where our season was done. And certainly he covered that, got the win, pitched five innings against them, had seven strikeouts, one walk. I think he only gave up two hits or, or three hits and no runs. And that forced the, uh, the winner take all on that Monday. So he had had that experience of being able to step up. You know, he uh, he really stepped up as our guy uh, on the back end of the games this year, our closer. We didn't really have one going in and, and didn't really have a plan with our long relief guys and pretty much knew who our starters were going to be. But first half of the season, we had to really navigate through that pitching staff and, and figure out the pieces and how we were going to use them. But one thing that was always constant was Justin was going to be in there, a part of it at, at whatever point or role that we asked him to be in. But – he soon uh, took that closer role and 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 embraced it and, and really and really gave us uh, gave us what we needed in the back end. You know his his ability there on on those games in in the tournament. You know his relief pitching against Troy that evening, uh, where we ended up beating Troy eight to seven in game two. You know was was phenomenal. He ended up getting the win there, but it was Sunday's game against Lafayette. How we had it planned out that Nico Mazza, who had pitched two and a third innings before in in a game, I think against Troy, we started him on Sunday. Just the plan was to let him get as far as he can go, then go with Storm, not save him for the back end, get him in there and let him go as far as he could. And then we had another couple of pitchers lined up, with one of those being Tanner Hall, our Friday night starter where basically he was going to throw one inning and that was to close it out if need be. And we would use that as, as his bullpen day, but storm, you know, what he, what he does in, in that moment, he goes five and two thirds and never has to use anybody else after that and, and gets the win in that championship game. So he's been a big part of our success on, on that mound this year. So, you know, these coaches are experienced when he absolutely knows I was going to ask him about Tanner Hall coming in at the end. Even I tweeted out, right. Raging Cajuns better score a couple of runs because Tanner Hall is going to come into this ball game, and, and you basically explained that was the plan. Uh, we're talking to Scott Barry, Southern Miss head baseball coach. So let's go back to uh, the regular season. We had you on early on in the season. It was a little bit of a bumpy road uh, for Southern Miss. I think Scott Watkins had, had come on, and he said the pitching was fine, uh, but the hitting had to get a little going. And what what turned the season around for you guys uh, at the plate? Well, you know, I think as everybody got deeper in in the season, and I think you look at that across the country, the majority of the teams weren't hitting real well at the beginning. But, you know, I like to think as as the temperatures start warming up, the winds kind of start changing to the south, it starts to become more hitter-friendly days. Certainly everybody starts getting more at-bats under their belt. Pitchers start getting fatigued as they start to get more innings and more more throws out of their arms. So, you know, I think it all plays into a little bit more of a hitter's advantage overall uh, as you get deeper in the year. But, you know, I think the real gut punch uh, and what woke us up was the Coastal Carolina series, David. I mean, the first two games, our pitching staff gave up 35 runs in two games. Uh, you know, we scored 14 runs. At that point, we'd only been scoring uh, averaging seven runs a game. And in that three-game series, we, we, we averaged 9.7 runs a game, and we end up losing two of the three. So that gut punch that Coastal Carolina gave us really um, had us to where we had a choice to make, you know, continue on the road we were on. Uh, where we basically were laying on the ground with the ability to to get up and salvage one game against Coastal, an all-important game, not to get swept on the road. You know, we were both ranked really high. That was one of the biggest uh, series of the weekend across the country. 
uh, or we could just, you know, lay there and just keep getting kicked in the ribs like they were doing to us. And, but our guys, you know, we're, we're older guy led and inside leadership, you know, uh, with a little direction from, from us, I think uh, we, we were able to get up off the mat and deliver the blows that needed to be delivered against coastal Carolina to salvage that, that win and what sent us on, I think, a 15-game or 14-game winning streak, which now is 19 of our last 21 we've won. We're talking to Scott Barry, head coach of Southern Miss uh, Baseball, locked on Sun Belt. Let's talk a little bit about, about Coastal Carolina. When they were coming in to play the Cajuns, uh, they were like 30 points ahead. And this is just Sun Belt games. I don't think it matters much, but just mm-hmm. Sun Belt games. They were 30 points ahead of the next team in batting average. They were leading the, the league in home runs by about 20, and they were second to the Cajuns in stolen bases. I claim that they were like the Golden State Warriors of baseball. Mark Calvary of South Alabama, they're like the Harlem Globetrotters. How difficult is it, you know, when they are so deep and so powerful and so explosive, uh, as, as how, how do you play against something uh, like that? And that and then what the Cajuns did to them, they scored four runs in two games against them. It's, it's insane. I, Right. right. Well, you know, I think Coastal Carolina is a different animal at home. You know, that part right. is it plays really small. You know, there's no dimension. That's the first time I've been to that venue, and there's no dimensions on the outfield wall. So you have no idea what the distance are other than when you hit BP or even balls in the game, when they leave there and they look like routine fly balls at, at our park and, and most parks, you know, they're going out there. So – you know, they, they play really good. They know how to – their swings are kind of – honestly, they're, they're made for that part. But they're very athletic. They have a lot of power. You know, I like the way that, that they go about their business. They're an extremely tough team. They're led by that little second baseman uh, who is just a <laughs> fine little player. You know, their catcher, catcher Bodine is, was a freshman player of the year, another exciting player. So, Coach Gilmore obviously has done an – fantastic job at Coastal Carolina and continues continues to do so. You know, won the World Series back in 14 or 15. I'm not sure which year, but, you know, something that's hard to do for this level, mid-major level programs. But, uh, yeah, they're very good, and they line up good with, with Lafayette. Lafayette is a, an exciting athletic club. Speed is their game uh, as, as well. So both very difficult opponents to try to navigate through and, and try to win. Yeah, you got the Eels at the top of the lineup, and then at the bottom of the lineup, you got Blake Barthol who can crush it as well. So it's a, it's an odd nine-one punch in the Coastal Carolina uh, lineup. We're talking to Scott Barry, Southern Miss head baseball coach. It's locked on Sunbelt, your team every day. All right, Southern Miss just misses out on hosting. We'll just get your thoughts on that. You're heading to the Auburn Regional. Well, you know, I know it's all RPI driven. I get that. I mean, it has been for years. And is that the right system? I don't know. You know, um, it, it just – it's hard for me um, to to understand how baseball at the Division One level, how it's gotten to be so good across the country and, and one conference is able to get half of the field of host. Um, you know, that's, that's hard to swallow because I know there's a lot of good baseball around the country. But, you know, what, what was handed out to us and, and this – this tournament is what it is, and we move forward. And, you know, certainly we we are uh, embracing the opportunity and the challenge to go into that Auburn Regional with uh, with Sanford and Penn and Auburn as the the other three impo- opponents in it. So, you know, uh, we just – we got to focus on that, just like the other teams who have to go to the venues that are hosting as well. What was the experience like last year? Because very rarely is that the case where the group of five team – is hosting the Power Five team. And not only were you hosting a Power Five team, you're hosting the LSU Tigers. You beat them, and Southern Miss hosts the Super Regional. What was that experience like for you, the team, and the fans? Oh, it was unbelievable. I mean, it was it was outstanding, uh, and, it, and it propelled us into this year. The momentum that we left there last year in the 2022 se- season here at Pete Taylor Park took off back in February in the first game. You know, before the first pitch was ever sold, we had sold all our season tickets, uh, standing room only season tickets. We were, had, we were right at a million dollars in season ticket revenue before the first pitch was even thrown. So people em- embraced it. They invested in it. And, uh, you know, they, they were ready for baseball season to get back here. So 
you know, the ability for us and, and programs like us at our level to, to, to get that host and, and have your fan base embrace it, you know, I think it's a difference maker in years to come. You know, can you talk about that a little bit? Because I think from my experience, you know, obviously the Cajuns have to put up with LSU. South Alabama has to put up with Alabama and Auburn. Uh, Troy has the same situation. It kind of feels like Southern Miss has their own little fan base uh, that is, you know, is not paying attention to Ole Miss or Mississippi State. I find that very uh, refreshing uh, and different because usually, you know, everyone's going to be a fan of one of the power five schools and then Southern Miss. Southern Miss seems to have their own little fan base, and I think that's nice. Well, and I can only speak on our behalf, David, right. and, and that's what I want to do. You know, I feel like there's a rich, rich tradition here at, at Southern Miss of what we've been able to do in, in winning conference championships, whether it's reg, regular season titles or conference tournament titles. You know, obviously, we just moved into the Sun Belt this year. We were we were able to, to win the Sun Belt conference tournament yesterday. But prior to that, we've been in Conference USA ever since I came to the league as an assistant coach back in 2000. And really, the, uh, the where, where we started getting consistent was in 2003 when we won the regular season title and the uh, the conference tournament title. And that was against Tulane when they were rocking and rolling when mm. Coach Jones had it going back then. So, uh, you know, I, I – I, I like to think that our fan base is one of the strongest fan bases in the country. You know, if you look at Mississippi as a whole, a, a state with less than 3 million people in it, and you take all three of our big schools, ourselves, Ole Miss, and State, you total those attendance each year uh, and then take it and, and put it against the big three schools in any other state, it doesn't even come close. The attendance that this, the state of Mississippi draws for baseball – is second to none. And, and I think with that, what you said, Southern Miss fan base, you know, they recognize us and they don't really, you know, they don't really worry about the other two. And I think that speaks volumes uh, for, for who we are and what we've been able to, to accomplish and the consistency over the years. And, and especially the last six, seven years, this is our seventh regional that we've uh, we've been to consecutively we now have attained 40 plus wins in seven consecutive seasons. That's the longest streak in Division One baseball. So uh, proud of that consistency uh, that we've been able to create and the tradition that's been brought about. All right, a couple more questions for Scott Barry. We'll let him think about what his favorite answer is going to be because it's going to be about himself. So we'll let him think about that for a second while I get a chance to ask. I don't know if you got an answer to this one. Uh, you know, how do you approach the regional? Do we go with Tanner Hall in game one? Do we save him for later on? How do you, you know, you get that first win under your belt and then worry about or, you know, try to get the first win under your belt with your ace? Or, you know, how do you handle that uh, going into the Auburn regional? Well, I don't know. You know, we uh, certainly it was just about three hours ago. We learned who who our opponent was going to be and who all the uh, the teams were in our regional. So we're in the uh, in the process of, of breaking that down. None of these teams that, that are in the regional with us have we played, nor have have they played us. So, uh, just trying to get a feel for it, uh, what you know, what the opponent is about, uh, and you know, we'll make that determination a little bit later. So, got some decisions to make. In all honesty, traditionally, I've always gone with my number one out the gate uh, with that, but um, you know, we'll just have to evaluate the the opponent, Sanford, which is a good opponent, and certainly not going to take them lightly for no reason uh, and, and and shouldn't. Very good club, earned the automatic and the SOCON conference to get in this regional as well. So we'll just have to kind of break it down and see, see where it comes to. All right, let's wrap it up here with Scott Barry, Southern Miss head baseball coach. You announced your retirement about a week, you know, heading into the Cajuns weekend. Uh, we were looking to get, you know, what the series was going to be about. And then you decided we're going to announce our career from my understanding uh, it was not a surprise to the people there, although it was a surprise uh, to everybody else. You know, relatively speaking, coaching wise, you're still relatively young. I think you're 60. You're not even actually retirement age. Uh, what prompted the announcement uh, and the, the decision to step down following this season? Well, you know, David, this all uh, I made this decision in my mind last last August. And I honestly mm -hmm. kept it really quiet outside of my family, my athletic director and a few close staff members that that I work with on a daily basis and in my own coaching staff, nobody else knew about that. Um, I certainly didn't want it to be a distraction. And, uh, but you know, I, uh, is it the right 
decision. I don't know. You know, I, I could coach baseball till I die. I mean, I could. Uh, was that what I was born to do? Probably not. You know, there's other things that, that I enjoy to do that I've probably missed out on in 39 years of, of coaching at this level or at the at the college level. Some of that 10 years at the at the JUCO level. But, you know, um, you know, is it the right thing to do? I guess time will tell me. But is it the right time now to do it? Yeah, I know it's the right time moving forward. And, and just with everything, the landscape of, of college baseball and where I'm at, where I'm at in my career, which I'll be honest, I'm glad I'm at the end of my career and I'm not getting started in, in this business because it's totally different from the time I, I broke into it as a student assistant back in 1985 at Southwest Missouri State, which is now Missouri State University. So, but I have thoroughly enjoyed my time and, and this profession has absolutely been a blessing to me and my family. Most of all, it's the relationships and the people that I've been able to meet uh, because of baseball. You know, you being one of them in this interview, if I wasn't coaching baseball, certainly we wouldn't be having this talk today. So fortunate to all the players, the staff and, and fans and just everybody that that I've encountered uh, in, in this profession and just feel like I'm really, truly blessed and and ready for the next chapter in my life. I don't know what that's going to be and, and what it will entail. People ask me, what are you going to do? And I simply answer, I don't know, whatever I want to do, I guess. But I know what I will do is I'll reflect on all the good times and the and the great wins and and all the great moments that this this profession and job has brought me and and I won't think a thing about the tough times and the tough losses and the disappointments. Uh, life's too short to think about that, so I'll focus on the good things. Well, my sources and you may be able to figure out who they are. Uh, tell me, you're a big time hunter. In fact, you found by just gobbling. At practice, you found some <laughs> wild turkeys uh, roaming around the campus on Southern Miss a couple years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I'll tell you what, I do love to hunt. I do love to fish. You know, it, I, I'd probably be lying if I told you that's all I can do and, and want to do. That's just a part of it, you know. And I, and I got to do that as a baseball coach as well. But, you know, um, you know, spend time with my family, you know, my, my – my oldest child has moved back here with his wife. They don't have any kids yet, but, you know, it'll be good to spend time with them. I have a daughter that's going to be a junior in college, so I'll be able to go visit her and see what her college is all about. So I'm anxious to do those things. My wife and I can travel if we want to and really have nothing holding us back. So I'm excited about, um, you know, the future. And, you know, certainly I'll be a presence around Southern Miss. I plan on being at baseball games and, and watching Coach Ostrander, who will be the next head coach, and his staff in this 2024 team continue the tradition that's been built here. See, folks, I hear what I want to hear, and I just heard Scott Barry said it's time to be a grandpa. He's telling his oldest one to hustle up. Let's go. That's what I heard. <laughs> yeah. If that happens, I'll feel blessed for that too. <laughs> He's head coach Scott Barry, Southern Miss, a uh, head baseball coach. Really appreciate your time, coach. Congrats on the Sun Belt Championship and best of luck in the uh, in the Auburn uh, Regional. All right, we'll be watching. Um, always a pleasure, David. Thank you very much. That was great. Thank you so much, coach. You betcha. Thank you. Right. And I hope by, the way, by the way, that yes, that Alabama is hosting that is one of the crazier stories. This whole baseball season. They weren't going to make the tournament, oh, and now they're hosting. Well, I tell you what, uh, they're you know that's going to be a tough regional for somebody to win outside Alabama. I really feel like it. Right. They're a good, they're a really good ball club. We played them earlier in the year. Now we didn't show up and play, but they're very athletic. Uh, they're really good on the mound. I knew that going in. People had told us that, but you know they're they're a team on a mission and they're on fire. And and JJ. Uh, Jason Jackson, who is the interim right. head coach, I hope he gets the the head job because he's done a phenomenal job. He's a he is a great person, a great baseball man. I've known him for a long time, and uh, you know I couldn't be more happier uh, for him and and what he's done there and and recovering from that tough tough day that everybody experienced right. in that program. Right. And as far as Auburn goes, I know last year they got on a serious roll. They had a crazy mm -hmm. trip out to like Eugene or wherever they went to play. They did. Uh, That's right. You're right. That's where they went. So yeah, and it, it was crazy. And they had the guy who looks like a you know a, a you know, softball a a Sunday league softball player. Yeah, he's not with them anymore though. I don't. No, think. no, he's, he's not. A, no, he's gone. Yeah, he's, he's gone. You don't have to worry yeah. about him. 
He's um, the guy that transferred from Samford. Oh, yeah, he was a big, right. We may he have, a, I don't know if the catcher, is the catcher there? The catcher's from Mobile. You know, I really don't know. I don't know yeah, much Yeah, I don't know. The catcher's from Mobile. But they got on a roll last year. So that was, it's always fun when you're not following anybody and all of a sudden they can't lose. So that's right. Um, that's right. We'll see. I think, you know, I think the Cajuns got a shot. We'll see. They don't need as much pitching uh, as before. You guys obviously have a shot. I not necessarily wouldn't want to face Troy. And right. good luck to whoever's facing Coastal. I think everybody in the Sun Belt's got a shot to win their regional. Well, I'm I'm super happy for Diggs and, and his staff. And we've texted each other back and forth today. So uh, I thought they really deserved to get in, certainly after they beat Coastal twice on that Saturday. That was not an easy chore that they had oh. to take on there, I can tell you. And, you know, like you said, the Marshall kid stepped it up. It's kind of funny. I didn't realize it until uh, – Lane Burrs at Law Tech told me, he said, you know, that's Mike Marshall's uh, nephew. Well, Mike Marshall played for me and Coach Palmer at Meridian, this boy's uncle, and Lane played for us at the same time. So I had no idea. Of course, <laughs> my staff ended up when I told them that, they said, well, yeah, we offered him. He came in here. Do you not remember visiting with him? And I'm like, no, I don't remember. <laughs> so we have so many of them. We have so many of them that come through here. Uh, sure. That you offer, and you know, some of them say yay, and some of them say nay. And uh, but, un but unlike but, Justin, you know, Justin had a good season and had a good ERA. I think Blake's ERA heading into like the last five outings was like five, and now he hasn't given up anything in the last five outings. It's down to like three and a half. Jeez. Well, you know, somebody told me like the most pitches he thrown this year was like thirty something in an hour. <laughs> you know, and he goes one hundred and fifty pitches in one day. Five, what was it? Four, four to third in one game, and five in another. Exactly. Right? So, how much yeah, of that? You know, I got to figure that helped out, Justin. How much of that is adrenaline? Because you get to play at the plate, then you guys tie it up, yeah. then you take the lead. How much well, of that, that was is a, playing on adrenaline? Then? Yeah, that was a huge, huge play. You know, we had given up the two runs, and and uh, on that bases loaded single back up the middle, that they took the lead two to one, and then uh, we give up a hit. Justin gives up a hit. And Reese Ewing throws a guy out at the plate. That was a huge momentum swing back to us after giving up those two runs. I mean, that could have easily been a three-run inning and two-run lead that they had. So, uh, you know, sometimes those plays, they make the difference. And and certainly I think that that's the uh, pivotal point and made the difference in, in giving Justin the confidence to move through. And, and uh, you know, our guys, you know, just they just they just played hard and both teams played hard, but they we did. came out on top. Yep, yep. I appreciate it, Coach. Thank you so much. Oh, All right. Okay. Thank you, buddy. We'll post, this, uh, we'll post this tomorrow. Sounds good. Thank you.